Hello, everyone, and welcome back to Farmer Joe Homesteading. Today is part five of our Breed Info series. Today, we are going to be covering Easter Eggers and Olive Eggers. This pretty little hen is an Easter egg that we have here on the farm. She is considered an Easter egg because her egg is usually a very pale green. Easter eggers are usually a lighter shade or a blue. Now, these two girls <laughs> are Americanas. You can see their little faces. They are hilarious. They like to eat the snow. They are also typically considered an Easter egger as well if they are not from pure lines. Now, these girls come from Splash and Lavender lines. So these girls are more on the purebred end. <laughs> but they are from a mixed flock. Yes, you are. <laughs> and we also have olive eggers. So we have two girls that lay a really good, true olive color. We have this pullet here, and we have one of our older, <laughs> one of our older girls. I wonder if she's over here somewhere. <laughs> Easter eggers and olive eggers are crossbreeds of chickens. So they are they are not a purebred and they're not really technically a breed um, because they are a cross between two different chickens to get the egg colors that you desire. Easter eggers are anything blue cross to a light brown or medium brown um, layer. That is where you're going to get, sorry, I have a Tom trying to get around in here. Uh, that is where you're going to get those lighter, softer toned greens and blues. Um, for the darker, it's going to be a dark brown layer crossed to a blue layer. So that is why we have our olive and Easter eggers in this pen because this is our black copper Moran's pen, which you can find their Breedome info series up there. So this is the pen that we have set up so that we can offer other people more beautiful dark green eggs. So the interesting thing with genetics with olive eggers and Easter eggers is when you cross the brown layer, a dark brown layer, back to a, a dark uh, green layer, like an olive egger, you get an even, you get an even darker green the next generation, which we haven't got yet. Our our back cross hens, um, I don't know if we ended up with any, so we have a lot of F1. F1 refers to first generation. We have a lot of F1 olive egger pullets that we hatched out last year so we are really hopeful to get some of our own bat cross girls, um, which are our olive eggers bat cross to our black copper moran's roosters so that's why we keep a lot of moran's roosters around because they are the key to getting those beautiful egg colors we do have an, another video that goes into more detail on genetics and actually shows a genetic chart. So you can check that out here. That's one of our most popular videos that goes into a lot more detail. Now, one of the big things with, with olive eggers that a lot of people get confused by is when you take an olive egger hen and back cross her to a black copper moran's rooster, because both of them are carriers of the brown gene, you have a 50-50 chance of getting brown layers or that 
green that you are desiring. So it can be tricky when you're breeding for olive eggers because of that. If you want to find really good, just green eggs, you're better off to find a breeder that does Americanas cross with that or our leg bars cross to the, the Marans. Now, that is why we have Americanas in here because then we can give people those beautiful first generation olive agar eggs that are a nice true green coloration. So olive agar genetics can be quite finicky, but they are really cool hens. We get a lot of really beautiful colors and I really do love the crosses that we get out of these girls. So far, we've got some gray chicks, but we've been selling them, so I haven't been able to see what they mature as, but they come out green, or they come out green, they come out nice and gray and fluffy little fuzzy cheeks um, that we have out of some of our Americana girls crossed to our Black Copper Moran's roosters. And our leg bar crosses to the uh, Black Copper Moran's are stunning. I love our pullets that we were able to hatch out in October. The really neat thing also with adding leg bars to the genetics is you can actually have sex-linked olive eggers with those genetics. So you can cross your leg bar hens to a Black Copper Moran's rooster and get auto-sexed chicks. All of the pullets will will hatch out solid black and, uh, and look like a Moran's chick. And all of the rooster chicks will have the big white dot on their head, classic of a leg bar, uh, because the roosters will be barred and the hens will not. So that has been a really fun project here on the farm as well, doing sexed olive eggers. And we're really looking forward to continuing that here on the farm as well. Our olive agar hens tend to lay somewhere in between the leg bar and Moran's mark. Sometimes they'll lay a little bit more um, just because they're a mixed breed. So that is really neat as well. And so we usually average about 200 olive eggs per year from our gals. Now, obviously our Moran's that are in here, or sorry, not the Moran's, our Americanas that are in here do lay a little bit more just because they are Americana. The Americanas are known for laying more eggs than you'd see just from the leg bars or So that is how we get our olive eggers and a little bit about olive eggers. Even though they aren't technically a breed, they are something we really focus here on the farm and it just didn't seem right to leave them out of the breed info series. If you guys enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe to our channel. And if you have any questions, we would love to answer you. Go ahead and leave them in the comments below. We are going to be continuing this series, moving on to turkeys and our geese and through all of the different breeds and varieties of animals we have here on the homestead. So make sure you stick around for that. And we'll see you guys next time.